and welcome back. As you can see behind me, there's a new piece in the shop. As I talked about in the last video, there was a major milestone coming up, and here it is. I'm finally at the point where I get to put the tail cone onto the fuselage. Currently, I'm working on the wall that goes in between the two, uh, where you can uh, bolt in the access panel to get into the tail cone behind the cargo area. I'm putting on the nut plates and everything like that, and then, and then you'll see me start fitting it up to the tail cone here. And you're just kind of marrying everything up, make sure everything is, is fitting okay and that you're not going to have any oil canning on the, on the side of the uh, tail cone. And then just, you know, once all that's set up, you'll take it back out. And here in just a second, you'll see, see me starting to do the process of marrying the two halves together. Now, this is something I would, was kind of concerned about initially in that I, you know, I do have a large shop, but I'm starting to run out of real estate. And one of the big concerns that I had was I wasn't sure that the shop was deep enough to fit the entirety of the airplane uh, once I've got it on its main gear. But now that I've got everything in here, and as you see me, I'm starting to line everything up, get everything ready. I've got everything in there, and I'm, I'm now fairly confident that I can fit the entire thing with the engine and the prop on and the tail feathers and still have plenty of room. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Now this whole process here is just a matter, uh, the, the instructions give you a certain dimension to have the tail cone, you know, the bottom of the, of the tail cone up higher than the bottom of the fuselage, so that way when you tilt it forward, it'll slide right into place. And so that's what you see me doing here, going back and forth, making adjustments, and as you can see, it was pretty easy to do by myself. You know, the, this this whole process, um, I was able to put the tail cone on by my own, by my you know, by myself, and there wasn't too much difficulties in it. I was actually pretty surprised. Once you got everything lined up and just kind of fit the skins in between, um, the fuselage skin fits in between that um, horizontal brace and the uh, tail cone skin, and then everything just kind of slid right where it's supposed to be. And as you can see here, now it's just a matter of clicking everything together to hold it in place. And it was a lot easier than I had anticipated. And now on to some, some news from Vans Aircraft in that they released some information regarding increase in costs, both to their uh, kits themselves, but also that Lycoming has passed on to them that March 14th, Lycoming is going to be raising their prices, about 10 to 15 percent, they said. Uh, someone who follows these videos uh, left a message on my previous uh, video and actually you know, brought up some good discussion points and, and uh, Pilot Jeff was asking whether, you know, what kind of engine I was planning on putting into this thing. And my plan all along had been to put in the um, upgraded engine that they've come out with, the Experimental 119, because it's a, you know, a, a good engine, especially for the fact that it's a little bit lighter and produces a little bit more horsepower. And it wasn't that much of an increase in cost from what I recall. However, um, you know, he brought up the idea of, of which version I'm going to go with, whether it's the standard uh, Experiment 119 or the Thunderbolt, and I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think we were talking about it a little bit, and, and with the time frame that, that we have as far as before Lycoming raises their prices, it's kind of sped up my timeline of when I was planning on getting the engine and, and ordering it, but... So long as I set up to take delivery before the end of the year and I make the order before March 14th, I can save that 10 to 15%, which is a substantial amount. It's anywhere from five to $7,000. And so I'm going to go ahead and place the engine on order and I'm going to do some research and see if there's a benefit to the Thunderbolt, which I think um, it was around $4,000 difference between the two Experiment 119 engines. And kind of see if it's worth it. And so I'm not I'm not entirely sure which one of those I'm going to go with, but it will definitely be within the next couple of weeks that I'll put that on order and uh, plan on taking delivery sometime toward the end of the year. Not quite ready for the engine itself, but that's what I'm going to go with. And then at the same time, I'm going to also order the uh, propeller. And that's the other debate that I'm having on whether or not to go with a two-blade versus three-blade 
Um, and so if anyone has any inputs, greatly appreciated. I'm looking for, um, you know, what's, what's the benefit of one over the other. The three blade is around $15,000, depending on which uh, manufacturer you go with. And the two blade is about $9,000. So again, it's a, a, a chunk of change difference. But so far, everything I've looked at shows that the three blade might be the way to go, especially with the horsepower that I'm dealing with. So those are two things that I'm going to be looking into, and I'll be placing on order here very soon. I still haven't gotten my uh, kits from Vans for the uh, Firewall Forward and the finishing kit. I'm still waiting to see when those will be ready. So anyway, I'm going to let this end here. Again, for those who continue to watch these videos, I do appreciate it. If you get a chance, hit that like button for me. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and you'll see these when I put them out. We'll see you next time.